Lucy, man. Let's go drinking. Drinking, yeah, baby. You speak my language, SB. See you at mine in the next hour. I'll come get you, Lucy. doctor's office, waiting to go in and have some shots in my forehead and lips, right? So I'm sitting there, and I'm reading one of those women's magazines. You know the ones I mean. Sure, Brucey. The ones that give the teenage girls of America low self-esteem and eating disorders. <laughs> yeah, right? Well, what would we do without them, right? Anyway, there was this article about bitches digging guys who don't work out. I mean, what the fuck, man? What's that? It takes all sorts. People got different tastes. You believe that shit, right? You you believe that shit. Girls like poor guys too, right? <laughs> Whatever. You crack me up, man. That's just rumor made up by guys who don't got the bots, bro. That's it. Yeah, I didn't realize that. I thought people had different opinions. All right, look, look. When a bitch sees you all cut standing there just out of the shower, water's dripping down your abs, your veins are popping out because you're jacked, and your towel is like slung real low, they see that shit. It's just more interesting, bro. Bitches like hard, straight lines. They don't like flab, all right? I'll show you a picture I took this morning when I got out of the shower. You'll see what I mean. I'm all right, Brucey. I'm really all right. A stylish kind of joint for a stylish kind of winner. Yeah! It's fucking fun! Did you see how those women oh. were looking at me, man? No, they were Hellcats! Hunters! Cougars, baby! Just like me! Vain? Drug addled? Full of plastic? Oh, man, shut up. Just shut up. Why are you always so negative, bro? Winners are never negative. I'm a positive person. I'm the best. I'm unstoppable. I'm genetically different, man. That's my vibe, and I'm sticking to it. I fucking love you, man. times, homie. Good times. See you soon. And do some crunches, man, for God's sake. Shit. Nico, you are really moving up in the world, no? I tell you we are going to the top when you arrive. Now, Mr. Ricky Gervais. Oh, thank you. Hi. Wow, thank you very much. What a lovely welcome. As you know, I do a lot of charity work. But in all honesty, I think that some causes are more worthy than others. Obviously, cancer is a very worthy cause. AIDS is a very worthy cause. But I got asked to do a benefit gig recently. 
for sufferers of obesity. What? Sufferers of obesity. I said, you mean fat people? <laughs> she went, no, because obese... Well, she actually went, no, because ob she was eating. So she went, obesity is disease. Oh, no, it's not, is it? No, it's not. You just like eating, don't you? How is that a disease? Oh, I'm so fucking ill. Mm. Oh, I am well ill. I went, what's the disease? She went, everything tastes good. <laughs> everything, <laughs> not salads. <laughs> what's not a disease? Leprosy is a disease. Can you imagine Jesus in the temple? People coming up to him in bands just going, Jesus, my flesh is falling off. And he goes, I can't stop now. There's a fat woman over there on her third pie. <laughs> I saw a documentary about a woman who was 350 pounds because she ate 10 pie and chips a day. That'll do it. <laughs> 10 pie and chips a day. 10 separate meals, 10 separate trips to the chip shop in a cab. Didn't even walk that. Wasted calories. <laughs> so in this documentary, they wired her jaw together to try and stop her eating. So she liquidised ten pie and chips a day. <laughs> pie smoothies. Now she's not even chewing. That used up ten calories. So, uh, they took her to hospital to give her that operation where they staple your stomach together. And she was sitting there in hospital, looking all depressed. Well, you can't eat for an hour before an operation, can you? <laughs> and she went, it's... It's a dangerous operation, but it's the only option left. Huh? <laughs> One, jogging? Oh, you don't even walk. Um, <laughs> salads? You don't like salads? OK. Nine pie and chips a day? That's a start, isn't it? They make excuses, don't they, fat people? They say things like, it's glandular. It's not glandular, it's greed. <laughs> It's big bones. Yeah, big bones covered in meat and gravy. <laughs> Unbelievable. Always complain. Oh, aeroplane seats. <laughs> they're not big enough for someone like me. No, they're not. Because if they were, we'd get 12 fucking people on the plane. <laughs> it's not fair. It is fair. You ate too much. And if we're talking about fairness and aeroplanes, why is it that I get the same luggage allowance as a guy who's 400 pounds? <laughs> we're both allowed 32 kilograms on the plane. I want to go, no, he used up his 32 kilograms on his tits. <laughs> Thanks very much. Good night. Enjoy your meals. Not you, you've had enough.
found me, cousin. I'll see you soon. Find good dope no more. Boy? Yes. Good. How do you do it? I went into a situation full of optimism, full of naivete. I got burnt. Look at me. Like smack on a fucking spoon. Well... How do you manage? I don't know that I got off so lightly. <sighs> we all got our demons. Aiden O'Malley. What about Aiden O'Malley? I heard he's being moved. <clears throat> Maybe this is our time. Put all this crap to bed. Get off the drugs. Live with the memories. Aiden's being moved by Van from the bacon factory. He's been talking shit about me. Back to the Albany State Correctional Facility. Please, Nico, boy, just this last one. Please. Sure, Derek. You and me, we're the same. The same. The, the same. We're the same, you and me. Derek is asking you to ice his old drinking buddy Aiden O'Malley. Yeah, he has. What's the big deal? O'Malley is in government custody. He's got more police protection than the mayor. I left a truck with a rocket launcher in it for you in an alley off of Applewhite in Alderney City. A truck with a rocket launcher in it? What am I meant to do with him? Who knows? Anyway, the convoy with O'Malley in it has to go through the booth tunnel. You're gonna get there first and block the road with your truck. I'm gonna come in from the rear and block him that way. Pick up the truck and give me a call. All right, 
I've got the truck. When we have him blocked in, we take down the escort and make off with the prisoner. Why don't we just kill the fucker there and then? That's probably what Derek would have told you to do in his smacked out state. Problem is, he's the first one they'd talk to if that happened. We gotta make this look like a prison break. Great. They're leaving the old cop shop now. Should be at the booth tunnel soon. I'm in position, Pecky. All right, man, we're coming to you. Take out the escort, but keep Derek's pal alive. What's this jerk think he's doing? Hey, Mitch, can you find out what this guy's up to? some cops giving me trouble. Oh, this is crazy, Nico. I'm going to call the DA right away. We've got to ditch this truck. They don't exactly blend in. We've got some transport. You're not free yet, asshole. Get in that car. We've got rid of the unwanted attention. Now it's time for business. Get us to the cliffs in Leftwood. Fucking motherfucker! The cliffs of Leftwood, then. Is there a boat coming or something? 
Where am I going? You're going to a faraway place, my friend. Damn right! Somewhere the cops will never find me. Nobody's gonna find you where you're going, friend. Shit! I don't even know who sent you guys. Who do I got to thank for springing me from the joint? We're doing this on behalf of an old acquaintance of yours. I knew I wasn't forgotten about. I knew that no matter how long I rotted in there, people on the outside world still remember me. People remember you, all right. You're at the front of certain people's minds. Well, who is it? Not Julia. She stopped writing and coming on visiting days, but I could tell she was still thinking of me. I knew it. You'll find out who it was when we get there. In the meantime, shut the hell up, buddy. All right, friend. Thank you. Out you come, old boy. The cliffs, the sea air. I really am free. I could cry. You've made me a happy man, boys. Now it's time to tell me who asked you to do this. Derek McCreary. He's my brother. Derek? But he ratted me out. He's the reason I ended up in that place to start with, the spineless. So you thought you'd talk about it? He's my brother, and guys like you are killing him. Nico, get ready, dear old Aiden. Aiden is dead. That's the end of a chapter. I can close the book on a whole lot of my past now, Nico. Thanks. Maybe a clean break is in order. A fresh beginning. Good luck to you. Pecky, man, how are you? How about some darts? Darts? As long as I can drink something while we do it, I'm in. Come get me in the next hour. I'm on my way. All right, Nico. I'm late for yoga. You getting to know 
know the McCreary family pretty good, Nico boy. What's left of it, at least. You good people. I like it how you have stayed together. All of us except for Francis. And we stayed together when it was possible. I guess we got Ma to thank for that, taking us to church and cooking a big lunch for the family on a Sunday. When Jerry first went to Juvie, she kept laying a place at the table for him. That was until my pa got into a drunken rage one week and threw Jerry's plate against the wall. What happened? Ma didn't even flinch, she just sat there. The next week, Gerald's place at the table was empty. She must be a strong woman. That's what I thought at first. Now I just reckon it was denial. She got this power to switch off. When Pa would get drunk and do things, she just glaze over. I don't know, she's my mom, but I ain't never gonna understand that. There's a lot that I am never going to understand, Becky. A whole fucking lot. Good to see you, Nico. Give me a call. Hey, Nico. I got a line on this guy who can set me up with bombs. I'm thinking you're the kind of guy who might need one every now and then. Call me if you want me to hook you up. Thanks, Becky. That could be real useful. I'll call you if something comes up. Nico here. You want to go out on a date with me? Do you know how cheap your calling me like this makes me feel? I can't resist you. I'd really like to see you, Nico. I really would. Pick me up in the next hour. See you soon, then. Nico! I look forward to this so much. Let's go. This car gets me in the mood, Nico. Please tell me you didn't waste your hard-earned money on a new top on my account. Ugh, new pants, I see. The new shoes make you look like a pimp. me to concentrate on eating when I'm with you, Nico.
enjoyed that, Nico. You're a good conversationalist. Do you think about politics much, Nico? When you have seen what I have seen, you realize that most leaders are after the same thing. They're out for themselves, no matter what party they are a member of or what they claim to believe in. Yeah, but if you had to choose, liberal or conservative? I don't see a difference. I guess I'm a liberal. I mean, I believe in the welfare state and the green energy movement, but it's not perfect, you know? I'm conservative when it comes to family. This nation was built upon a belief in the family unit and the strength of the nuclear family. If we don't hold on to that, then we won't have anything. People who jeopardize family with adultery and internet porn and homosexuality and it's just disgusting. Marriage is sacred. People get married and it doesn't always work out. There's always a way to make it work. Always. Perseverance is the key. The key to everything. It would uh, mean a lot to me if I could come inside, Kiki. This is going to be amazing. I might cry with happiness. All right, then. Nico, you can prosecute me anytime. Oh, Nico. I love you, Nico different from girls back home. 